You know, people often ask about the future of green building. And, and I have to sort of chuckle that the future of building is green. Because if we don't take on a more environmentally responsible approach to the built environment, uh, we're going to continue to take a slippery ride down a very tall slope. For as long as we've been involved in this practice as human beings of constructing and building things, we've looked at the relationship between the built environment and the natural environment as one that is a one-way street. That is, we look at the effect that nature has on the built environment. And so we've always looked at the constructed uh, version of man's activity when we look at materials and we look at where we locate things, whether it's an individual building or a city, uh, an entire nation. We've always looked at it from the standpoint of what effect nature would have on our built environment. Over the last 50 years or so, we've begun to understand that it's a two-way street and that there's a cause and effect that the built environment actually has a big impact on the natural environment. And that's escalating over time. If we look at our transportation issues, if we look at our resource depletion, if we look at the impact that we're having on all the ecosystems around the world, we can bring many of those things back to the way we construct, the way we design, uh, and the way we plan for the future. On any design project, there are several key elements that have to be reviewed to make incorporating 3D design tools as seamless as possible. First, what design inputs do we have to work with? No design at all, scanned line drawings, illustrations, or 2D or 3D CAD files. Then we have to find out the construction technology to be used for build-up verification. We have to address COPE compliance for the area in order to set the correct construction guidelines. And then we have to review construction site orientation and elevation details in order to make sure the proper flow heights and offsets are used in the 3D design. For this project, we received a very detailed design file that was produced using AutoCAD. The Dietrich software team decided to keep everything inside AutoCAD from a design standpoint to make data sharing simple and reduce the risk of data loss due to incompatible design files. Since Dietrich Software is an Autodesk development partner, we have the ability to either operate our software technology as a standalone product using our own proprietary technology, or we can create designs directly inside AutoCAD seamlessly using all the capabilities of Dietrich Software technology, as well as being able to use all of the standard AutoCAD design tools for design purposes. This is the best path forward for this project since multiple companies are involved that use AutoCAD and the initial designs and vendor files were designed in AutoCAD. This is going to be a stick framed wall, so let's just look at the wall properties. These are the properties of a external stick framed wall. I have a five and a half inch framing core. Then on the inside I have half inch gypsum board sheathing and half inch of plywood on the outside. The total wall buildup is made up out of 15 individual layers. They'll go from minus seven on the outside to plus seven on the inside. I'll add a couple of vertical battens on the outside here for a ventilated cavity, keep moisture away from the wall. And as a finish, some wood siding, five and an eighth. And just put some values in from the database that explain what those layers actually are and specify the properties of the layers at the same time. There's external slices, sheathing, and just sheathing ports. With that, we have our wall buildup defined now, and we can look at the thermal performance of that wall. Just click here on U-value, and I have a resulting U-value of 1.3. The U-value is the thermal performance of that wall, and it tells us how much energy is transmitted through the wall. The smaller the U-value, the less energy we, lo we lose. The current U-value of 0.3 is an equivalent to an R19, and it's calculated according to ISO 6946. Here in the center, I have mineral wool mixed with the stick frame with a 16% framing factor. Now to change the U-value and edit that, I add some insulation on the outside. That's three inches of rigid insula insulation panels, polyurethane or EPS, 
and here in the database, material database, I pick out thermal insulation, find the right material I'm going to use. So let's use an EPS panel, uh, EPS polystyrene, and uh, we have the properties of EPS in the database. So if I apply that now, the U value you see changed to around about 0.19. And that translates into an R value of R30, which is a much b better wall than we had before. With the changes that we just made, we have an overall wall thickness of 11 and 5 eighths. If I want to position my wall, I can define a reference axis that I draw. And the reference axis should sum up the outside layers of my wall, so I can define with 5 and 5 eighths, the outside of my stick frame. If I draw the wall now, I can either position the reference axis, the outside, inside, or the center of the wall, and trace around the lines that I get from the architect. Now, in addition to that, I can define what information I want to get from my walls later on for casting and quoting. With the tick marks here, I can define from which layers I want to have an area dimension, or an insulation dimension takeoff. So for my sheathing boards, the polystyrene panels is insulation. Here I have another area, so I know how much uh, plywood I'm gonna need. Same for the chips and board. C stands for the structural core slice of the wall, and this is gonna be untouched by other walls. I can save this setting now, give it a name, and like that, build up a library of walls that can reuse for other projects. So this is now not US default, this is US with external insulation, ventilation, that's my one and a half inch battens on the outside, and siding as a finish. Okay, have this wall property saved, and now we can give it a quick test ride. So I go to wall definition now and start to draw a couple of walls that we just did and see how they work. Wall definition, there's my external insulation ventilated siding. It's an external wall, connect in the corners. I position the reference axis, go from right to left, that's clockwise, belongs to ground floor, and then start to draw the walls from point to point. Now here you can see I'm defining the outside of my timber frame rather than the outside of the wall. And just draw a simple floor plan here. Okay, back to origin. This is already 3D information. So there, take a look at the corners. And here you see the red dotted line is the reference axis and the gray lines are the individual layers that represent my buildup from inside to outside. Okay, tilt that up in 3D. All individual wall objects. And now check the properties of the wall again. Just highlight that one wall. And that's the properties that we defined. So that's the right properties. Okay, and uh, I'll quickly show you what that's gonna look like as soon as we apply structure. So that's the overall walls. If I take off the siding on the outside, that's our battens for the ventilation. Next thing would be the insulation panels, that's our EPS. Underneath is the plywood sheathing. Then most important, the actual stick frame. That's our core slice and the chips and board on the inside. I'll tell you more about structure of the walls and how to apply that in a later chapter. Of course, we have similar properties like the wall properties for floors and ceilings. So here we have different properties that have already been saved for different purposes. Stick framed, concrete, or whatever other style. And we have the same for roof surfaces as well. So there we can set up up to 15 layers of roof framing, siding, tiles, or just asphalt.